Okay, quick video on XRP. Uh, XRP has ran up to the red easy bands for obvious reasons in case you're out of the loop. Uh, SEC pretty much lost the case against uh, Ripple. Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna say who's the winner or who's the loser there, but it was definitely in favor of XRP um, being called not a security, at least the programmatic buys on exchanges of Ripple or of XRP were not considered securities. Um, so historically, uh, if we look at the easy bands, which are just a, a really good measure of when something's bought or uh, overbought or oversold against where it's been at for the last 21 weeks. So we've got our 21 week simple moving average here in purple, uh, and then we just have extensions below and extensions above. Uh, historically, I mean, XRP, at least, you know, going back to late 2018 really hasn't uh, gotten too overextended or, or underextended versus these levels. It's respected the easy bands really clearly. And I'll pause here just to say that 99% of, of uh, crypto investors um, could really, really benefit from a tool from either just straight up the easy bands or a tool similar to it, just so you don't get caught up buying the, the FOMO, buying the top here uh, when it's just just stupidly over o overvalued or overextended to the upside. And at the same time, um, not selling down here when things are just very uh, oversold, right? Um, so historically, XRP has respected this indicator quite well. Doesn't mean that when fundamentals change, we can't just continue to rip up here. We could absolutely continue to rip up. Rip up. Um, we could even consolidate here and just you know start grinding up slowly. This was a, a big change to the fundamentals of uh, the entire crypto asset class and for altcoins in particular, but also for XRP directly, because this is something that's been overhanging XRP for quite a while. We're gonna throw in our long margin pressure levels. You're gonna see that the local top, right? Not only did it come in on that red easy band, right? Right around that red easy band, which is resistance, it's exactly our 2X long margin pressure level at 94.7 cents. Now, I personally did not short it here. I'm not gonna step in front of uh, a moving train, uh, but this can give us a pretty decent look at uh, potential entry points if anyone's looking to trade XRP short or long. So where are the buyers going to step back in? Well, if we take a trip back down to 71 cents, which I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not convinced that we are, but if we do, um, you're going to see buyers incentivized to jump in at 71 cents. Why? Because you can go long on 3X leverage and hide your liquidation point below all of this support down here, all of this support where the move actually started. Right. So logically you can think, oh, I can go three X long here or the market is incentivized to go three X long here as soon as price dips below 71 cents, because what are the odds that this entire move gets run back? What are the odds that XRP um, goes anytime soon or really ever goes below where it was before this decision went public or before the, the, the SEC case was resolved? Right. It's 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 probably not going to happen. At least, you know, something terrible would have to happen for the crypto markets uh, for XRP to, to retrace this full move. So uh, you can just, you know, as soon as price drops below 71 cents, if it does, you can go 3X long, right? And the market is incentivized to do so because the market's probably not going to believe that this is going to retrace all the way, right? So you're going to see a lot of longs come in at that level, which should act as support. You can already see uh, we set, saw some bouncing between our 5X and our 4X levels. We saw resistance because at this point, you can no longer use 2X long leverage, right? It, without putting yourself at risk and moving your liquidation point above all of that support. Hopefully that makes sense. Now the reverse is true and we can isolate for, uh, for uh, shorting incentives in the market. And you're going to see because these are uh, perfectly mirrored move, this is a perfect 100% move up to the 2x long margin pressure level, you're going to get confluent levels, confluent levels right on top of each other between long incentives and short incentives. So we get rid of the long incentives. And we see the short margin pressure levels uh, lining up at the same place, right? Where can you no longer go short on 3x short leverage? and no longer maintain your liquidation point above this local high. Well, 71 cents, right? So if we dip below 71 cents, you, no one's gonna be wanting to short this on 3X leverage because now they've got to move their liquidation point down here and we come up for a double top, they're getting liquidated, right? And everyone's gonna be wanting to long this on, on uh, I believe it was uh, 3X le leverage. Yeah, 3X long leverage, right? So you have those two incentives in the market shifting all at 71 cents, which is, you know, likely to create a bounce, right? And then we go to our risk reward levels. Um, so I'm going to get rid of these and they, 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 uh, they line up perfectly. So 
So let me drag these over because I had them set on, I believe, a longer time frame chart and apologies for the, the amount of time that this takes, but it'll be well worth it. All right, so we're gonna move that over there, over there, and we're gonna zoom back into the 15 minute and we may have to just reset them again uh, because they get offset on the candle. All right, so we're back into the 15 minute. We've got our risk reward levels set on our full move here, our full 100% move. And you're gonna see the, uh, uh, you're gonna see additional confluence. You're gonna see the one-to-one -one risk reward level or essentially the midpoint comes in also at 71 cents uh, as well. So if we, you know, just take a measured move from the, the impulse here, from where the, the, um, the, the news came out, that's a 50% move, right? From the bottom, it's also gonna be a 50% retracement from the top, right? Or sorry, a 25% retrace, 25% uh, re retracement from the top. But it's where your your one to one risk reward is in terms of your uh, your risk scenario being a move back down below this low, local low, and the the risk scenario or the reward scenario being a new high, right? So if uh, another way to demonstrate what's going on here, uh, just you know if we were to take a long at seventy one cents, and we were to play, and I'm not saying this would be what you would do with the trade. But essentially, if we put our stop loss below this or at this local low and we put the target at our local high, you're going to get a perfect one to one risk to reward ratio. It means there's a, an even amount of meat on both sides of this trade. But because we're in an uptrend, because we have positive news, we would be more more likely to see this move to the upside. So once we cross that threshold of one to one risk reward, the incentives at this level shift to favor longs versus short. Right, so as we move this down, right, this entry point down, let's say it dropped to 68 cents. Now you're getting a better risk reward on a long, right, uh, isolating for this move than you would on a short. Because on a short, uh, if you bear with me, because I'm trying to explain this, this concept, I know 99% of you probably get it by now, but for the, the people that don't get it yet, uh, I just wanna make sure I drive this point home, right? Uh, a short, at the 71 cent level is getting one-to-one -one risk reward, right? And again, it, the it, the likelihood of a new high, in my opinion, is higher than the likelihood of retracing this full move. And I think the market's going to agree should we move down to 71 cents, right? Uh, but now, you know, you're getting, you're getting at 71 cents, you're getting a one-to-one -one risk reward on a long, a one-to-one -one risk reward on a short, right? But as soon as we cross below, right, you're getting a better risk reward. You're getting a one point, let's call it a 1.2 risk reward on a long, right? Versus a 0.85 or 0.841 risk reward um, on, on the short, right? So this becomes quickly lopsided as price drops below 71 cents. And that is another reason for buyers to come in and shorts to leave. And all of that happens at 71 cents. So me personally, you know, while we're, we're bouncing around in these risk reward levels are two to one and our three to one right now, uh, I'm looking for this, you know, this low to be swept, a move back down to 71 cents. I don't know if it will come, but if it does, I will be longing there. I'll be longing at 71 cents. Uh, and looking for another move up higher. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please consider uh, subscribing on YouTube, like the video, like it on uh, Twitter. Um, and I, if you want access to all those indicators that I just used, you can go to sistine.ai. Um, it, it, at the end of the day, they're just indicators. There's no guarantee that you're going to be a profitable trader if you use these indicators, but they're what I use. And I think they could be a tool that pay for themselves over time if you apply solid risk management and a good trading strategy behind them. Um, also, you can get access to them if you sign up for the Research Hub where we just identify asymmetric risk reward opportunities in the crypto market, present them to our clients. Here's our past history so far in 2023. A couple of plays that are actually coming to fruition right now. We've talked about Solana and Solana DeFi. Solana's ripping today. Solana DeFi, TVL continues to run up, earning uh, north of 7% and doing some airdrop stuff on Solana. Got a lot of NFT plays in the pipeline as well. So um, definitely check that out if you want asymmetric risk reward opportunities that we identify sent to your inbox. Also join our Discord community. Um, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. Peace.